Welcome back everyone. So let's assume for a second that you have already watched the CAD uh, tutorials and are quite familiar with Fusion CAD and you want to learn how to do a uh, cam for the water jet. So this will be the right set of playlists for you. And this is the first video in that playlist. In this video, what we will learn is how do we set up the environment to have all the resources that we need and have our camp set up. So let's get right into it. This is an example part of something someone might want to water jet out of sheet metal. So this is about a quarter inch thick. So if we check the thickness here, we can see that it is quarter inch. Okay. Now, one thing I have to pay attention to is this is a component file. And if you guys have seen our previous CAD videos, you will know that for CAM purposes, we need an assembly. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and create a new file and save it as CAM for WaterJet. And I'll open up that file. And in that file, I will first import my part. So I right click here, insert into current design, and I have my part. Now, for you to have your CAD complete for WaterJet, what you need is an accurate representation of your part, that is whatever you're cutting out of the sheet, and an accurate representation of your stock, that is the sheet you're starting with. And this has to be accurate. You don't have to include every little hole or nook or cranny, but you need to give the general shape correctly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new component and call it stock. And in that new component, I'm going to design out the rough dimensions of the stock. So what I can do is go here to here and I'm going to say it's 50 by 50. And let's say I found a piece that was 30 by 40. There we go. And there was a small hole cut out here that was about four inches. So this is the piece and I can extrude this to be the same thickness as the part that I want. And I have an example of a rough piece that I might find at BIDC that I've modeled up. Now I can turn back my part and I can see that this should fit. Now, if all I had to do was make one part, I just need to navigate to the assembly level, perform a joint between this and this. I'm going to flip that around and position it somewhere logical. So this would be a logical location. Now this is for one part and you would click OK and you would make your stock translucent so you can see the part clearly. And you see that these two are attached to each other but they're not attached to the assembly. So I'll turn on the origin and I'll do a joint between this and the origin and click OK. And now the CAD would be ready and I can proceed to CAM. Now that's for one part and if you are just looking to do one part I would skip ahead in the video and start looking at the CAM setup but if you were doing multiple parts there is a more optimal way of doing this so let's look at how multiple parts would work. So we've got one of these and you can have different parts, but I'm gonna pretend like we just have the same part. And I can just paste. And paste. And paste. So I have four. One, two, three, four. Now, my intention now is to fit these onto the sheet. And if I wanted to, I could use joints to manually arrange them 
into the sheet but that can be tedious and it can be especially tedious if you have different shapes of parts so a quick easy way of doing this is to click on arrange capture position and specifically click on the body one two three four for the uh, bodies to be arranged and then click on the envelope and the envelope is going to be this plane and as you guys can see it has auto arranged itself into this plane and at, it's packed as densely as it can be now what I could do is I could ask that there be a sufficient room on the edges of this sheet so I can clamp properly so maybe I need three inches of room so I can specify three inches and as you guys can see it forced a three inch clearance now I can also dictate spacing between the parts so maybe I want two inches of spacing between the parts and as you guys can see now that it rearranged to give me two inches of spacing between the parts and three inches from the boundary I can click so if you look at this right now you can see that it's placed it on top of the stock and I don't want that so that's an easy fix we just have to flip envelope and now it's going to be inside of the stock you guys can see that and I can click OK now at this point nothing is joined together so if I were to drag this out it would come out so the next thing I should really do is form a rigid group so you go to assemble rigid group and I want all of these things to stay fixed relative to each other and I click OK and at this point this is a singular rigid group it's still moving in the assembly so I will perform a joint between the sheet and the origin of the file there we go and I'll hide the joints and at this point I have my CAD model in a form that is usable and ready to go on to the first step of CAM uh, one other thing I can do to slightly improve this is increase opacity uh, decrease opacity making the stock translucent can you guys see that there we go so keep in mind you had the instructions for doing just one part which is basically a joint between the sheet and where you want to put the part and we had instructions for doing multiple parts where you have all your multiple parts you use arrange to arrange them in the sheet and then you form a rigid group once you have your stock and your parts set up the way it's going to be on the machine you navigate to manufacture in manufacture you will create a new setup and the setup first thing you'll have to do is select the water jet so you go to cloud Bechtel machines and right now I don't see the water jet and the reason I don't see the water jet is it's filtering for milling so I will turn that off no longer filtering for milling flow mark to 2020 C that's the water jet I'll select that it has automatically changed my operation type from milling to cutting the next thing is asking me to do is place my work coordinate system this is effectively your 3d origin now the 3d origin technically can be placed anywhere on top of the sheet so there are two layers this is top of the sheet middle of the sheet bottom of the sheet but in this case we are going to place it on a specific location on the sheet so lower left corner maybe upper left corner uh, upper right corner lower right corner it can be anywhere but usually convention is to put it in the lower left corner and if you're gonna break convention make sure you uh, let your peer mentor know so I've placed it there and the next thing it wants me to do is to select my models now these are the models that I'm going to have at the end of the cam so this is what's going to come out of the water jet 
so those would be or jet part here 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 and here so that's that's good I next go, now go on to the next tab where I have to define my stock so for now it has been auto generating a stock but we have an explicitly modeled stock so we are not going to use the auto generation we are going to choose from solid and select our stock as the solid make sure to keep an eye on the uh, WCS and it should still be on the top lower left corner the top being very important lower left being important in general but it can be something else if you want it to be just have to communicate that to the TA in the third tab we have the post processor so I encourage you to pick a four digit number now let me walk you through what numbers you cannot pick you can pick any number starting from a thousand up to eight nine 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 except for two zero two zero you can pick any number starting from a thousand up to eight nine 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 except two zero two zero we're not going to get into the details of why that's the case i usually pick any random number try not to pick the default number of 1001 or common numbers like 11111 1234 because what's going to happen is if other people are also working and go with the same mentality they can accidentally override your files and you could accidentally end up cutting a file that was meant for someone else so give it 30 seconds of thought and come up with a number i'm going to go with 5501 also make sure that you have a comment usually what i like to do is put my project let's call this proj os uh, project management system which is also called os1 and then followed by my name annie p just in case uh, multiple people have used the same number accidentally at least the program comment is a good distinguishing factor the WCS is going to stay at zero and we're going to click OK the workpiece maximum X is larger than supported for this machine so I got a warning do I want to ignore this no I'm just gonna click OK and say yes and then check how wide this is so this is 90 inches Unfortunately, the water jet is only capable of six feet, which I think should be 72 inches. So I would not be able to put this sheet in the water jet and the cam is already helping me figure that out. So I'm gonna go back to design and I'm gonna make a minor change to my stock. My stock, I'm gonna use a new operation that you guys haven't seen, which is push pull. And I'm just going to move that back. So this is something I might cut out from the sheet. And I'm going to move back by 33 inches. Now this is pretty arbitrary. But you guys can modify it to what would fit on the water jet. Back to manufacturing. Edit. And click OK. I no longer get that error. Because this distance is 57 inches with fits within the water jet. And with that, I have finished my CAD, which was stock and part together in one place, everything accurate, and my CAM setup. In the next video, which will also be the last video, we will just see how to do the toolpaths, and then you guys should be good to run on the water jet. See you guys next. Okay.